Good morning, viewers. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Our topic for today's meditation is Selfish Ambition. Before we proceed, let us pray. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, we call on you to speak to us in a language that we all will understand. Grant us the grace that at the aim of listening to your word, our heart will submit to the obedience of your injunction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our topic again is selfish ambition and our text is Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or then conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. To be ambitious is to show strong determination to succeed, which is fine. However, to be selfish is to enthrone personal interests above the collective good. Selfishness hinders growth breed jealousy, competition, and hatred. Selfish ambition can destroy. It rejoices in the failure of others and feels bitterness when they succeed. Some lead by the sharp principle, attack everything and everyone in your path as far as it is for your benefit. It is good to remember that you can succeed without castigation or pulling down others. Verse 4 says, Let each look out not only for his own interest, but for the interest of others. To this end, Paul admonished us in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13. To forgo our right to eat meat, if doing so will make a brother stumble. Today, some brethren will not look out for others, acting only in their own interest. Daily, we sacrifice Jesus, not just for our brethren, And rubbish the cross for our own selfish end. But the evil of such a lifestyle is that it breeds emptiness in the soul and consequent judgment. Beloved, this is a call to humility and serve as the antidote to selfish ambition. As we said earlier, to be ambitious is not bad because to be ambitious is to show a strong desire to achieve your set out goals or end in life. It is not wrong to have the ambition of buying a car or building a mansion or becoming a great man in the society. But the moment that ambition becomes selfish, it is no longer on the good side. Therefore, the word of God this morning 
draws our attention to this fact that we are not to allow our selfish ambition control all that we do or desire for it can lead to evil because that is when the sharp principle principles of attacking everything and everyone in your path can come to play why because every interest that is set on self will always bring destruction for it is not built on the collective good the benefit is personal not a general one it will be good for us to consider some biblical evidences of some people who engage in this act of selfish ambition and how they ended of course we all know what happened to Ken we use him as the first in the list because it was as a result of this selfish ambition that made him become jealous of his brother ever and it grew to hatred to the point that he murdered him. What about the people in Genesis chapter 11 verse 4 who gathered themselves together and wanted to build the Tower of Babel. They too were scattered because their ambition was a selfish one. When you look at Exodus chapter 15, sorry, chapter 16, verse 1 to 3, and also verse 35, we have also Korah, Datan, Abiram and those in their company who stood against Moses through the same spirit they too were destroyed in the days of Joshua Achan a man that was well known in among the Jews a vibrant army also was destroyed when he allowed the spirit of selfish ambition rule over him. We all know how he ended, not just himself, but his entire household. Of course, the first king of Israel Saul also suffered that. What about Absalom, the son of David? If you read first Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, and second Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, you will hear how these people miss it in life because they were full of themselves. What brought about the fall of Lucifer? If you read Isaiah 15, 14 verse 13 to 14, you will hear how he became full of himself. And when he put that into play, he loses his place in the sight of God. The leader of Tyre in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 2, also fall victim of what our faith is drawing our attention to. It is not only in the Old Testament that we have people who suffer such negative effect of putting selfish interest 
ahead of all things in their life. Our Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament warned his followers to beware of that spirit, that same spirit of selfish ambition. When we read the following scriptures, we will hear about this. Matthew chapter 20 verse 21. The mother of the two sons of Zebedee also came before Christ and made a request which shows what our text draw our attention to. That whatever we are to do, we should beware of doing it to our own interest only. It is expected that we have the interests of others in mind so as to be a people who will exhibit the true nature of God our Maker. When the disciples of Jesus Christ started to dispute among themselves as to who is to be regarded as the greatest, among them, it becomes a thing that Jesus warned them about because that also shows what our passage and text is referring to. Whoever exalts himself shall be humble, but only one that humble himself shall be exalted. Matthew 23 verse 12 give us that example. When you read all these scriptures, it will open your eyes to know the danger of selfish ambition. God who met us do not want us to put this spirit of selfish ambition to practice for it destroyed development it kills progress it draws people from living together in unity and love towards one another today many families have suffered and are suffering as a result of selfish and that people conceived in them. Even the church is not left out. What is causing our disunity in the church today? Even in its global setting. This as a result of selfish interest. The hardship, the suffering, the trouble of all kind that we in Nigeria and in Africa and even in the world are faced with are as a result of this spirit of selfishness. It is our prayer. That the good Lord will deliver us from the spirit of selfish ambition. For wherever this is found, there can never be any meaningful development. Therefore, people of God, we are calling on you to turn your heart to the word of God looking at the word of admission admonition that Paul gave to us Paul make us here in that first Corinthians chapter 8 verse 13 
I read that passage for emphasis sake. Verse 13 says, Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause him to fall. Whatever thing we do, let us not just put our interests first. Let's consider others. Let's be mindful of others. Let us allow what our Lord Jesus Christ summarized as the law to us in Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 and 39 which draws our attention to the fact that we are to love God with the whole of our heart and as well love our neighbor as ourselves. Whoever that loves his neighbor will not fail to do what will serve as benefit for him in life. Whoever that loves his neighbor will not want to see him suffer. And so we as Christians, we as children of God, must put away every selfish interest from us in order to allow the love of God rule our heart and help us build one another. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are late to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNN TV. Check out our website at www.acnntv.com. Let us pray. Lord, help me to achieve the ultimate ambition which is to know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. I pray for you that as you listen to this word of God, the Spirit of God will fill you with love and humility and help you to grow in the knowledge of the Almighty through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen.